Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1,226 of our trek, and it is Worldview Wednesday. Creating a biblical worldview is important in order to have a proper perspective on today's current events. To establish a biblical worldview, it is required that we also have a proper understanding of God and His Word. This week we will begin a new series to assist us in building our biblical worldview. Our focus for the next several months on Worldview Wednesday will be Mastering the Bible through a series of brief insights. This is another book from one of today's most prominent Hebrew scholars, Dr. Michael S. Heiser. This book is a collection of insights designed to help us to understand the Bible better. When we let the Bible be what it is, we can understand it as the original readers did and as the writers also meant it to be. Each week we will explore two of these insights. So today we'll look at Mastering the Bible, Let It Be. For insight number one, it is, let the Bible be what it is. Dr. Heiser unpacks this statement a bit. Letting the Bible be what it is means to interpreting the Bible in its own context. Bible students talk a lot about interpreting the Bible in context. When most readers consider context, they think of the verses preceding and following the passages that they happen to be studying. And this is one interpretation, but context involves much more. There are many different contexts that, even today, dictate how we understand what we read. For example, the world in which we live provides a context. If I wrote the word text on a blackboard today in a room full of college students and asked them what the word means, I would hear very different answers than what I would have heard 20 years ago. Students today would immediately think of wireless electronic messages. Their worldview is dominated by technology. That wouldn't have been true a few decades ago. That was a different world at that time. The type of writing or document dictates how we should understand what's written. In literary terms, this refers to a genre. If I was looking at the word court in a legal document, I would interpret it much differently than if I was holding a tennis magazine. The word treat in a doctor's note means something different than it would if I found it on a grocery list. Genre is a context that is crucial for interpretation. There are many other examples. Your culture, religious thinking, political system, family unit, and social structure all influence how you process the Bible. We might know that intellectually, but we often fail to embrace the fact that the Bible writers wrote for their immediate audience, who had context quite differently than our own. Interpreting the Bible in context means interpreting it in the light of the worldview in which it was produced. Filtering the Bible through our worldview, or any worldview that came after the biblical period, means altering how the Bible was meant to be read. We need to let the Bible be what it is, an ancient work from another time and place. To apply the Bible to our lives accurately, we need to know what the Bible actually teaches. For our second insight today, don't second-guess God's decision and inspiration. In Dr. Heiser's experience, some Bible students are concerned that the worldview disconnection between us and the ancient biblical writers mean that the Bible can't speak to the issues of our time. But that just is not the case. While the Bible is a pre-modern and pre-scientific book, The truths it asserts are timeless. We need to trust God's wisdom and inspiration. If God wanted to inspire scripture in the modern age, he could have done so. It was God who decided to prepare men living between the second millennium BC and the first century AD to produce the books of the Bible. It was God who decided that they were ready for this task, despite the cultural attitudes that we would have deemed backwards. It was God who didn't require the writers to have advanced scientific or technological knowledge to write everlasting truth. These were God's choices. God's choices were good choices. God is not incompetent, 
God intended Scripture to be applicable to people who lived beyond the first century. He also intended Scripture to be understood by the people who originally received it. Since God is omniscient, He could have given the writers living thousands of years ago advanced knowledge without their knowing it. But that knowledge could not have been understood by anyone reading the text until a millennial or later. Millions of people living prior to our time would have had no hope of understanding the Bible. That would have defeated the cumulative purpose of the Bible. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Acts chapter 20, verse 27, For I didn't shrink from declaring all that God wants you to know. If that were the case, the Bible would not have been comprehensible, which undermines the inspiration's purpose for which is stated in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. God, in His wisdom, prepared ancient people to express truths that are independent of the knowledge base of one particular time. Ancient people were entirely capable of communicating fundamentally significant ideas that are absolutely relevant today. That God is Creator, that people were created as His image bearers, that human life is sacred, that people cannot provide their own salvation from sin, and there is good and evil, and so on. As we'll see later, this perspective is important for understanding what the Bible says in certain places. It's also critical for apologetics. Hostile critics of Scripture often belittle it for being pre-modern. But this criticism only has weight if the Bible was intended to contain modern knowledge but fall short. Nothing about inspiration presumes this, and so the criticism amounts to being angry with the Bible for not being what it was never intended to be. This is a deeply flawed logic. But we play into the hands of the antagonist when we try to make the Bible something that it isn't. We must honor God's wise choice to inspire it in the time and places that He did. And that will conclude our lesson for the first two insights from Dr. Heiser's book, Mastering the Bible. Next Worldview Wednesday, we will continue with two additional insights. I believe that you'll find each Worldview Wednesday an interesting topic to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow we will continue with our three-minute humor nugget that will provide you with a bit of cheer to help you to lighten up and live a rich and satisfying life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and to come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,225 treks or read the Wisdom Journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally. Listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.